Hello everyone, my name is Stanley St. Rose, and today we're going to be talking about Invisible Man, written by Ralph Ellison. Now, before we go into the summary and analysis of this novel, please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment so that the channel can continue to grow. Now, we're not given a name for the narrator um, within this novel. The main character is just the main character. Um, so, for our purposes during this video, I'm just going to be calling him... Um, the Invisible Man, because that's just who he is. So we get introduced to the Invisible Man um, when he's like graduating high school, and he has this speech written up, and it's really um, um, interesting and it's very powerful. He um, says it at graduation, and everybody loves it, everybody cheers for him. Um, and after this, the Invisible Man gets invited to read the same speech at this social function. Um, and so he goes there, he's all prepared, he's just graduated high school and everything is going well for him. Um, and so he goes there and when he arrives, he actually just gets pushed into this group of um, black kids. And these are all boys and they, they all get pushed in together to this ring where they all have to fight. And he has no choice. He, he has to fight. They get blindfolded and they all just get thrown into this ring together. And it's not just, it's not play fighting. Um, it's full on. Um, they're hitting each other. They're um, do, they're doing everything that they can to hurt each other. Um, and this doesn't end there. After this, they go onto this electric rug or this electric floor where they have to like pick up these fake gold coins that they thought had had value, but they don't. Um, so they're put into all these games and all these um, skits, kind of and. It's all for the entertainment of the rich white men who are watching them in this social function. So the Invisible Man, this actually really throws him off because he he went there with you know hope and and you know a bright future for him. Um, but when he gets there, it's not what's presented to him. And he um, at the end of this, he actually he gets to go up and to to say his speech, but he can't speak because his mouth is full of blood from all the fighting and all the the things that he had to do to entertain these men. And while he's like trying to struggle and, and try to fight through his speech, um, he kind of says um, social equality. And these these um, rich white men, they're not happy about this. They're, they're like, how dare you? How dare you come on um, to come into our uh, function and, and speak of such uh, blasphemy? And, and, you know, they're not happy about it. Um, but, you know, at, at the end, they kind of like give him a briefcase and, and they send him off. They said, you can go to college because you've worked hard and, you know, you, you should get the chance to go to college because you've worked hard and you're black. And they, they send him to Negro college, which is not really much of a win because that's like, you worked hard at the bottom. So your reward is get to, you get to stay at the bottom, but at the college bottom. So it's not really much of an upward mobility. Um, while he's at this party, he, there's, the, the, there's another scene that happens where this white woman, she's completely naked and she's like thrown on for the entertainment of these rich white men. And, you know, she's, she's just, there's, she's just not working, wearing any clothes and it's all for entertainment. It's all for their pleasure. So they're enjoying their, you know, they're having fun watching these black people, these black kids fight each other and get bloody. And then they're, they're watching this, um, white woman, um, dance around for them naked. So these rich white right men, they're like at the top of the pyramid and everything, you know, is working out for them. They have money, they have success, they have prestige. Um, and everybody else in the society is kind of um, serving them or subordinate to them. Um, so after the, all of this takes place, we see the invisible man leave his home. Um, his grandfather does like give him some words of wisdom. Um, his grandfather says, like, I, I sold out or, you know, I believed what um, the you know white society was telling me to believe in. Um, you know, this what the grandfather says to the Invisible Man, um, it's something that he thinks a lot about. It's kind of like it's one of two things. It's kind of like trying to tell him to look ahead, but don't believe everything that you see. Don't believe that just because somebody um, is saying that something is for your benefit doesn't really mean that it's for your benefit. Um, but the Invisible Man, he doesn't really quite believe in this. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't believe that he's being tricked or that 
um, he's believing in the white man's truth. Um, you know, he thinks that there's benefit for him, that the world is bright for him, that there's opportunities for him, which is really not true because fundamentally in the novel, you do see a white society trying to keep black people in place. So the Invisible Man, he, he goes off to college, to, to Negro college, and things don't work out. Basically, what happens is he's he's doing well at first and everything's going well. Uh, the president of the university, um, Dr. Bledsoe, is this black man, um, and he's, he's he's well off. He has money. He's he's the president of this university. There's there's large donations coming in from benefactors and philanthropists um, such as um, Norton. Mr. Norton is this rich white man white man and he's kind of like you know giving money to this negro university um, and he's he's like checking his boxes telling his friends you know i'm just so wonderful because i'm i'm a liberal you know i'm helping these black people better themselves educate themselves i'm putting some some wonderful people onto the community to do better um so you know he's patting himself on on the back and he's just he's just he sees himself as a wonderful individual and everything is perfect um, so when Mr. Norton comes to this university, um, the Invisible Man is tasked with driving him around, showing him the good places that his money is going um, through. So, you know, this Mr. Norton can feel much better about his don donations and the money that he's spending on these people. Um, so he takes out, uh, he takes Mr. Norton on the community. And the first thing that, that happens that's really bad is that um, he gets introduced to this local man by the name of, of Jim um, Trueblood. Jim Trueblood is this man that does not have a good name and people don't, he did something very bad. That's why people don't, you know, don't really want to talk to him. And he's kind of like a pariah in this small community because what happened is that um, he was sleeping and apparently his wife and his daughter, um, I guess the family just slept in one bed. Um, and he describes it, Jim Trueblood just describes it as, you know, he was having this dream and I guess he was having sex in the dream and in the dream, he ends up sleeping with somebody. And then in real life, it wasn't really a dream. He was just sleeping with his daughter and he gets his daughter pregnant in real life, not in a dream. Um, and you know, that, that's just terrific. And, um, this comes out in the community. Um, it's it's a bad thing. It's incest. It's it's just it's it's appalling. The community finds it appalling, and he 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 tr he owns up to it. He tells people the truth. He tells people what happened and how he was in a dream, um, and how that happened to him. And um, he tries to pray away um, the sin, and and he goes to church and try to repent from the sin of incest. Um, and the thing is here. Here's the problem with with, with um, the True Blood story or the True Blood part of the story is that um, True Blood is profiting from this horrific incident, from this appalling incident. You know, he's he, he's getting money and he's getting a lot of work. If he didn't have this horrific story of this incredible mistake that he made, he wouldn't be having so much jobs, so, so much job offers from local farmers and other people in this community that that need. Um, workers and laborers um, and in fact mr norton you know with all of his wealth gives true blood a hundred dollars so you know he's profiting from this horrific um, story and this and you know this crazy thing that happened to him um so there's a lot to learn from true blood story it's kind of like he did there's you know Culture sees them as bad, and, and this actually has a lot to, to say about black men and how people thought about black men. Um, but the, his story is very significant, and we'll get to it when we, when we talk about the analysis. So that happens. Mr. Norton meets True Blood. Um, you know, this is very horrific, and, and Mr. Norton is, is kind of like, he's, he's pretty much, he almost like, um, f like, goes through a trance or an, an, a time of disbelief or faints um, over the true blood, uh, the true blood story. And, you know, the invisible man has to take him back to the car. Um, next, they go to like a brothel or a bar where um, it's a bunch of black veterans um, and they're just trying to live their lives as best as they can. Uh, Mr. Norton gets hurt 
and then eventually this this black veteran who has medical experience has to um, patch or help Mr. Norton feel better. Um, and when Mr. Norton wakes up, the black veteran tells him that he actually went to the Negro College that uh, Mr. Norton funds and how, you know, it's all a lie, that it's all fake, that, you know, there's no upward mobility. It's just all a scheme to kind of like keep black people in place. Um, and the Invisible Man tries to not listen to this and try to not believe in this, even though that the veteran looks at him and tell him um, that that's what's going on and that there's not really that much movement for us and that we're just stuck. There's, there's you know, you can go to college all you want um, in the society that the Invisible Man lives in. There is no upward mobility. Um, so this all gets built up and this is kind of like the same um, advice that um, um, the Invisible Man gets from his grandfather before he leaves home. So th this is all kind of like piling it into the invisible man's head. Um, and he, he leaves with Mr. Norton. They go back to the college and he pretty much gets expelled. Even though that Mr. Norton was like, you know, you're, nothing's going to happen to you. I'm not going to tell um, Dr. Bledsoe that you, you took me to the worst parts of the community and that, you know, you showed me this and that. That's not going to happen to you. It was all a lie. And true, um, Bledsoe just pretty much expels uh, the Invisible Man, he gives him a recommendation letter. He says, go to New York. Um, this is a recommendation letter for you to learn your lesson. You can come back next year and finish out um, your college um, experience. And the thing is, like, the Invisible Man, he was only like one year or, or a semester away from graduating. Um, so he was almost done with this college. And for him, college was everything. He was still blindfolded. He still thought this society could do something for him, that this society could save him. Um, so he... You know, he had this hope, this 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 breath of life that that was everything was going to end up well for him, right? Um, so even though he gets expelled, he's kind of happy because um, Doctor um, Bledsoe has given him this wonderful recommendation letter that's going to get him a job in New York, enough time for him to to you know save up some money so he can go back to college and pay for college and have some money in his pocket. So even when he gets expelled. It, the world still looks bright for him. So Mr. Nor Norton goes back to his rich life. Um, Dr. Bledsoe just goes back to being the the university's president, the, the principal, or, you know, just in charge of his own world, his own life with no consequences. And um, the invisible man gets tricked and he gets, he goes to New York. He doesn't even go back home. He goes to New York and he goes around when he's in New York, he goes around with this recommendation, bringing it to different rich white men and saying, oh, I got this letter from this this university, um, you know, the Dr. Bledsoe recommends me to you, um, and, you know, I, I hope to find some work if you can help me out. And um, it wasn't really a recommendation. It was pretty much um, a judgment letter. The, the recommendation just, just told all the employers, all these men, how horrible the Invisible Man is, how he he's just a poor person, a poor person of character, and that he should never be given a job. Um, later, it's all, it's this this individual, this rich white man's son, that actually reveals to the Invisible Man that um, Dr. Butzel was not looking out for him, and Dr. Butzel was not his benefactor in any way. And this kind of like crushes the Invisible Man's world, because this is when he starts to realize that the world is the world is just not as peachy as he wants it to be. The world is just not as perfect um, as he wants it to be. You know, it's just not a cake. It's just not um, going to present itself to you just the way you want it. So he, he starts to get a taste of reality. Um, so he's he's in New York. He does finally get a job. This, is, this, ha this has nothing to do with the recommendation. He just finds a regular job in this... Um, factory that makes paint um liberty factory or or the, the 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 factory has liberty in its name which is which is kind of funny because there, there's no liberty there, there's no liberty people there, there's just no liberty um so he goes to work in, in this liberty factory that makes um really white paint for um monuments and and, and you know different things that needs paint that that has a connection with history, um, which holds its significance, um, and we'll get to that. But he gets a job in this factory. He's making white paint, but when he gets hired, he gets hired very hastily. Um, his boss doesn't even really give him instructions 
on how to make the paint or where to get the materials in the factory to make the paint. They just give them like instruct. It, if it felt like they gave him instructions for like three minutes, and then they just expecting him to know the job. So of course he 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 gets the white paint to be gray, um, and it, it's not what they wanted. It's it's not white paint. It's not super white paint because they wanted super white paint. But he made this murky gray paint, which was not what they wanted. So he gets sent to another part of the factory pretty much to go work in the basement um and that doesn't work either um there's this black man working in the basement and he's very um mad and grumpy and and you know he he wants credit for um doing his job and um he, he kind of sees that he's doing something important but he's really not he's still being oppressed because he's just just another black man working um a hard job trying to make ends meet um in this rich white man's world and there's no upward mobility for him at all because he's even working in the basement of liberty factory so i don't know why he wants credit so this doesn't do anything good for the invisible man eventually he winds up in this union meeting union meeting and he gets in trouble for that um an explosion goes off it was it was intended for the invisible man and he gets hurt he gets into this hospital where he gets electrocuted and forget a lot of a lot of things that's another interesting thing about this novel is electric ele being electrocuted i i they electrocuted a lot of people um tried to erase a lot of people's memories and i, I mean that that's against a lot of laws but you know he gets fired from that job and um, the factory is not held responsible. Um, and next he kind of meets this woman by the name of Mary. And Mary is another individual that um, tries to help the invisible man. Um, she gives him a room to live in. Um, you know, he, he kind of recuperates under her um, overwatch or supervision. Um, and she's kind of like a mother figure. She's the only gentle figure that the invisible man meets in the novel it's really she expected him to be something great um to become um something great and and um, she fed him even when he ran out of money um and ran out of the ability to pay for his living situation at her at her home she kept them there she kept on feeding him and and um she didn't ask that much of him so she's the only gentle person that that helped him um after this he kind of meets the brotherhood now the brotherhood is this group that has branches throughout the country in the novel and um, in harlem uh, we see them kind of building a union of black people of um, uniting black people but the problem is they try they tell everybody that you gotta forget your identity or who you are or even your name. They dictate everything that the invisible man does. They tell him where he needs to live, what he needs to wear, what his name needs to be. And at that's at a point in the novel, they even question his skin color. They 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 say that, you know, maybe he's too light to speak for black people. He needs to be blacker, which to me, I, what does that mean? What you're black, you're born black, no matter what, if you're light skin or dark or purple, if you're black, you're black. They, they say that at certain points that he's too light to speak for them in the novel, um, but they quickly forget about this and they let him speak anyway. Um, being in the Brotherhood doesn't work for the Invisible Man. Um, he wants to figure out what his identity is and he wants to think for himself. He wants to act for himself. Um, but the, the invisible, the, the brotherhood doesn't really want him to do that. They just want him to act on their behalf. And really the, the brotherhood is not about, um, upward mobility for black people. They have their own agenda. Um, that's why they meet or they clash with this, um, Roz the destroyer. Um, Roz the destroyer is another, um, interesting individual. He's, he's black. He, he doesn't believe in the Brotherhood and what they're doing and, and what they're organizing. Um, he incites a lot of riots. A lot of riots break break out in the novel and anarchy just breaks out in, in several um, lootings and, and, and fires and just all types of chaos. 
Um, and the Invisible Man gets in the middle of this. He clashes with Roz the Destroyer. Um, and a spear, Roz the Destroyer throws a spear at him and he throws the spear back. And, um, you know, he's getting chased around the Invisible Man. This is towards the end of the novel where he's getting chased around. And at the end, he just dives into this um, pothole or this manhole and um, he goes into the dark. He falls into this manhole. He falls into the dark. Um, and at the end of the novel, he kind of like burns his or cuts and just destroys his identification and he just goes out into the darkness. And the end of the novel kind of tells us that eventually he'll come out um, when he's good and ready. Maybe he'll have a different direction of his life. Um, but the novel really kind of ends him with him going into the darkness and being in the darkness. And that's really The Invisible Man. By Ralph Ellison. So there's a lot to talk about here. There's a lot. Let's just go into the analysis and just um, explore the this novel a bit more. Um, the title is very significant. Um, it's not the Invisible Man. Um, when we think about invisibility, usually we think about superheroes or beings being invisible. Uh, but in in the context of this novel, we see the Invisible Man as refers to as people being blind, people not seeing him. We see. Um, you know, white people within the society that the Invisible Man lives and they don't see um, black people um, becoming individuals of prominence. They don't see them um, in upward mobility. Um, even when, again, when, when he goes to college, this college, even if he becomes a doctor or whatever degree he gets in, he's not going to get a job with that degree. He's not going to become anything with that degree. The veteran, he said that he went to the same college. He He's a doctor. He he studied and he got his license, but he'll never get the jobs that um, other white men will get in this society um, because he's black. And it doesn't matter if you're the lightest black man on earth or you're the darkest um, black man on earth. You, 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 you're in the same pot. You're in the same um, river and th there's no movement for anybody. So... It's kind of like the Invisible Man for the entire book or the, his entire life. He's kind of like stuck in this fog that, you know, at certain points he believes that he's going somewhere, that he's going to be something. But really, he's being oppre oppressed in all sides and he's being kept down in all sides because his university can't do anything for him. His community can't do anything for him. His parents can't do anything for him. And other black people, the people you would think that would, that would help him become something or climb the mobility ladder um, are keeping him down. The brotherhood try to take his identity away from him. Um, Dr. Bledsoe, he's he's just thinking about himself. He's thinking about um, his progression. Like Dr. Bledsoe, this university president, um, he's subordinate and he only serves Mr. Norton and other um, rich white benefactors. He just wishes to keep them happy. Even the recommendation that he gives to the Invisible Man to go out to these um, different employers, even that recommend in, in, in that recommendation, he kind of like lowers himself and, and humbles himself and says, you know, your greatest servant. And, you know, if you don't give this other black man um, a job, I will be very happy because he's a bad person, even though the Invisible Man didn't do anything. Um, so he's only looks out for himself. The brotherhood only looks out for themselves. They see themselves as a group that has that has no um, individual person um, having their own identity. And no one in the novel really um, sees other people. A lot of people just see themselves and what they're working for. Even Mary, the one person that looks at the invisible man that tried that that is a mother figure to him, she expects something from the Invisible Band. She expects him to be um, this, this revolutionary leader, this great speaker, this individual that will make the black community better and grow the black community. So even though that she's, she, at some point in the novel, she gives um, the Invisible Man um, a, a free place to live and food, it's really not free because she expects him to become something. So it's kind of like she makes an investment in him um, so that maybe one day when he's famous, when he's making, when he's um, moving and shaking and, and changing the landscape of the culture in America, that maybe um, she'll get some credit for, for taking him in and um, nurturing him for, for, for uh, an amount of time. 
Um, so everyone um, in Invisible Man, everyone has a motive. Everyone has an objective. Um, no one gives the Invisible Man an, a, a time or his own space to develop himself or to figure out who he is. Um, everyone gives him um, a, a, a kind of like a, an idea of who, sh who he should be or what he should act like. Um, whether um, he should just believe in the idea that there is upward mobility and that he is going to become something or whether is, you know, all of it's against you. Everything is just trying to keep you in your place. Um, the other thing is um, when you look at um, when he falls into the hole or when he falls into the manhole, the invisible man, he, he just goes invisible. And I guess for that instance, you can just say he just goes invisible for... Um, because he, you know, there's a lot of people after him, and there's a lot going on that you know he's just had enough. Um, and in in that instance, I think that's the only time where in that darkness, um, um, falling into that hole, that's the only place where in the novel we kind of see him really start to think for himself, really start to um, define himself. Because when he cuts up and when he destroys his identification, he kind of like rips and destroys the identification that the world gave him right um you're issued a state id if you're in if you're in america or whatever country you're in if you have a passport your government your state um your municipality you're you're given um an identification card so yes you pick your name yes you pick what's going to be on there but they decide what it looks like they decide how big this identification card is what's supposed to be on there what colors are supposed to be on there um so you're 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 given a title um when he cuts everything up when he cuts his university identification all of that that all of those things out of his life he finally gets a chance to think for himself what he's going to be and how he's he may change the world that he's that he's that he's in and how he can benefit the black community uh because in a world where everyone is trying to give you um ideas of who you should be and what you should be sometimes it's hard to focus and understand yourself in the middle of that um and when you go back um to the advice of the the black um veteran who is a doctor and the grandfather of the invisible man what they're kind of saying is like don't you're in a fog but don't believe that this fog is good for you don't believe that you're seeing things for what they are you can play the game of the society that you live in you can play the game as much as you want but don't believe that the game um is rigged for you or that it's it's, it's established to make life better for you um do what they say pretend that you're happy pretend that you're being tricked but in the background work for other black people work to change the black community work to make equality an actual um, thing that can take place because fundamentally what's really important about the invisible man um it's it's really about the people that are that are not seen right um you, you you can see what happened to that woman in the beginning of the novel how she was just an object of entertainment how the black um, kids were just an object of entertainment so it's not just about black people essentially the invisible man kind of like covers a lot of different groups of people of individuals that are always oppressed that are always oppressed that are always kept down that are always um invisible to to the one percent or um the rich of society and how um cut them um, skin color race um, culture nationality can sometimes hold people back and um you know keep people at the bottom and keep people in their place so that's really the novel that is the summary analysis i hope you guys like my opinion about the novel and, and what i think it's about please remember to leave a like subscribe and or comment and i'll see you guys in the next video